Hello there. Oh, let's see if I can get my camera to work here. Okay, there we are. Good morning. Hi, my name is Selma Edker, and I'm Protestant Christian Missionary. Whoops, I need to put my glasses on so I can read your names. Okay. Welcome everyone out there. Hi, Charles. Are you the person that Norman has been communicating with? I welcome you to my broadcast. Norman and I have been married for three years and we are broadcasting from St. Charles, Missouri in the United States. We are so blessed that God has joined us together. We celebrated our third wedding anniversary in April and uh, so we're just so thankful to God that in our later years, with, he's 70 and I'm 69, and it's so wonderful to have someone to love again. And then also that together we can share the love of Jesus Christ with everyone out there in the world. And our prayer and desire is always that there will be some people who will have ears to hear and want to know about Jesus being the only way of salvation. And I want to say this, that Norman and I were not raised in a Christian home. So we, we have personal experience with other religions. So it's not that we have been a Christian from our youth up and that's the only thing we know. Not at all. Norman was raised as a Roman Catholic. I was taken to a church when I was a child that it, I later found out is actually a cult. It's called Christian Science. So neither one of us knew about Jesus when we were growing up. He was 28 years old and I was 50 years old when we became spiritually born again. So for over half of my life I did not know Jesus just like many many people out there in the world today they don't know Jesus and probably don't care don't want to know and I can relate to that I've been thinking about that the last few days that when I was well in my case it was because I was taken to this cult church growing up and I really did not like it. I've always been thankful that I did not believe this goofy religion. So many people get brainwashed when they're involved in cults. And one definition of a cult is that it is a religion that has been started by a person and the followers of that religion are actually living according to the teachings of that person who started the religion and not by the teachings of Jesus. That makes it a cult. So this um, being in that cult being made to go to this church I really did not like it and so when I grew up and left home I didn't want anything to do with church I didn't read the Bible for many years and uh, Norman's experience was similar so we as now as followers of Jesus our mission is to tell the world about Jesus being the only way of salvation and also to warn people about 
the cults and the false religions. There's thousands of them out there, and they're all instigated by Satan. Satan is a liar and a deceiver. He's the grand deceiver of all people who don't know Jesus. There's so many ways that Satan deceives people about God. Satan wants to be worshipped as God, and that's why he does what he does. It is to deceive people and lure them away from God in heaven. There's only one true God. He is the creator of the world and all that exists. God created mankind. We did not evolve from monkeys or from some cell in the ocean or crawl out of the mud or any of the other crazy theories that people have. But we are created by God. And God loves every person. And when a person is spiritually born again, the Bible says that love of God is shed abroad into your heart. Now we are Protestant Christian missionaries, and therefore we believe only in the Protestant Christian Bible. That is our current English Bible. It was translated from the Greek into English in about 1500 A.D. There was an Englishman named William Tyndale that translated most of the Bible from Greek to English so that the common ordinary people could read the Bible. But the devil hated, the devil hates everyone who loves God. And the devil put it in the hearts of evil men to kill William Tyndale. And so he was killed before he completely finished the translation of the whole Bible. He, he did get most of it done, but then some other people had to finish it. So all the evil in the world is instigated by Satan. But love comes from God. God is the source of love. Now on a certain level we there is human love, but it's very weak and pale in comparison to God's love. God's love forgives. God is willing Yes, yes, as Norman's wife, that made me also a missionary. And I'm so thankful to God that he has allowed me to be Norman's wife and to be a missionary with him. It's a wonderful thing. Charles, I realize that you don't speak much English, so I appreciate you listening to me. So I have, I have some questions out there. I don't know if anyone else is listening besides Charles. Um, it doesn't show that on my tablet, how many people might be out there. Sometimes there's a lot, sometimes there's only a few. But nevertheless, um, these broadcasts can be replayed, and Norman saves them on our website, which is howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. So anyone can replay them at any time if they go to our website, howtobecomeachristiantoday.com. So I have some general questions for the people out there, if anyone is listening and if anyone wants to respond. The questions are, do you ever, 
think about God in your life? Are you are are you so busy working, raising a family, having fun that you just push God completely out of the picture? Or do you ever think about the fact that God loves you? Do you know that God loves you? He does. God loves every single person in the world. And for every person that is spiritually born again, they have the love of God. God's love in their hearts for other people. And that's why Norman and I and other spiritually born again Christians talk to people about Jesus. It is a matter of life and death. Eternal life or eternal death, depending on your decision that you make regarding Jesus. Do you know that you are a sinner until you are spiritually born again? It is not, it's not about the sins that you may have committed. Maybe you feel like you've, that you're such a good person that you're not a sinner. And I think that is a natural thing. I know I was shocked to find, when I found out that I was actually a sinner. I didn't know that for most of my life. But God's grace is out there for everyone. And I didn't realize it many years ago, but God's grace was wooing me to turn to Him. Just like God's grace is wooing everyone out there. Hello there. Looks like Dr. 333. Welcome. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. And I'm talking about the love of God and the fact that everyone is a sinner, whether they realize it or not. The world would say, well, some people are worse sinners than others. And that is true when you look at the things that they do some people do live good moral lives and some people are very evil and do terrible wicked things but the fact is according to the protestant christian bible that every single person is a sinner when they're born and there's there's a very good explanation for that Adam and Eve were the first people God created and they had a perfect life living in the Garden of Eden and they were innocent. They knew nothing about evil until they disobeyed God. God told them not to eat the fruit of a certain tree in the Garden of Eden. Because if they did, then they... Yes, Charles, it is because of sin. Sin in the world. People are... People who have rejected God, who have rejected Jesus as Lord and Savior, are under Satan's control. Anyone who is not spiritually born again is controlled by Satan. And Satan is the author of all evil. 
So people do wicked, terrible things because they are influenced by Satan. A person who is spiritually born again and has God's love in their heart becomes a new person and they have this love of God and so they know they don't do bad things anymore. Everyone who is born has a sin nature because of the first sin committed by Adam and Eve. They disobeyed God. They ate the fruit of the tree. God said, don't eat. When they ate it, they did that because Satan tempted them to eat it. And they gave in to that temptation. They didn't have to, but they did. And when they ate that fruit, God said, don't eat it. Then they knew what evil is. They knew right and wrong. Before that, okay. Before that, they only knew what was good. They didn't have any experience of anything else. Because of that sin they committed, when their babies were born, those babies had a sin nature in them. They were not innocent like Adam and Eve were in the beginning. So every person that is born has a sin nature. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again. But Jesus was not talking about being born again as a baby, but about being born again spiritually. The spiritual new birth sets a person free from the sin nature. And that's what Jesus, that's how Jesus justified us. God's grace reaching out to all people that, that is his love God's love for all people his favor towards us his power to help us understand who he is his enabling power it draws us to turn to him and helps us to understand about Jesus that Jesus is the only way of salvation. Jesus lived a perfect sinless life when he was here on earth. Jesus is God. He was a God man. Some religions say Jesus was a prophet or a good man. But as I, I heard Norman say yesterday, something that I thought was excellent. He said if Jesus was only a prophet or just a good man, he would still be dead. It took a God man to take the wrath of God on the cross. He shed his blood, which was the sacrifice God required to pay the penalty for the sins of every person. A mere human could not have done what Jesus did. It took a God-man to suffer the wrath of God and shed his blood and endure that agony on the cross. And because Jesus is God, he then had the power to raise up from the grave. He was in the grave for three days. And then he arose, and that's called the resurrection. And he ascended back to heaven to be with God the Father. When Jesus did that, he crushed the power of Satan. And that was a promise that God made way back in the Garden of Eden that he was going one day 
to make a way for people to be free from the sin nature, free from the power of evil. Jesus did that on the cross. If he had just died and stayed in the ground, Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you. If Jesus had just died and stayed in the ground, he wouldn't have accomplished anything for mankind. But what he did changes men's lives, changes people's lives when they turn to him in faith. When a person hears this gospel message about God's grace and Jesus, what Jesus did is called justification. That is reconciling us back to God because sin, a sinner cannot be in God's presence. Sin is darkness, God is light. Jesus said he was the light of the world. Light dispels darkness. When you walk into a room that's dark and you turn on the light switch, the light comes on and the darkness is all gone. That's what happens when a person becomes spiritually born again. The darkness that Satan brings, the darkness that sin brings, is dispelled by the light and love of Jesus when a person turns in repentance to Jesus. Repentance is turning. It's turning your life. It's turning from your old life and turning to Jesus. It does not mean that you simply try to stop sinning in your own willpower. You can't do that. Maybe to a certain extent you could, but not fully. Repentance is agreeing in your heart and your mind that you will surrender your life to God, that you will obey the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists, only in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. That is the only thing that, that true believers are to live by today. Not the Old Testament, just the New Testament in the Protestant Christian Bible. So when a person hears the message about God's grace, about Jesus' justification, what Jesus did on the cross sets us free from sin and death and that is talking about spiritual death, meaning eternity in hell when you die. Everyone who dies will either spend eternity in hell or in heaven. There's no such thing as reincarnation, no soul sleep, no transmigration of souls, no such thing as ceasing to exist. But God says in the Bible, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. The only way a person can go to heaven is by surrendering your heart, your will, your whole life to God. And you live for Him, you serve Him, you obey Jesus' teachings. When you make that decision, then you can say to God, please forgive me, I'm sorry for my sins. And I will follow you, I will live for you, I will serve you. When a person makes that decision, the Holy Spirit of God comes and indwells in your heart. The Bible says you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away. And behold, all things are become new. It is a supernatural transformation by the Holy Spirit of God. 
and the Holy Spirit gives you that love of God for other people. It gives you the joy of being in the light of Jesus. It gives you the assurance that you will spend eternity in heaven as long as you continue to follow Jesus. Yes, Charles, it makes us very sad that most people do not want to believe in Jesus. It is very sad. It is the most important decision a person can make. And if a person chooses not to even think about it, they will go to hell. If a person Yes, that's right. It happens a lot. If a person never turns to Jesus in repentance, then they will spend eternity in hell. I believe that most people choose to believe that hell is not real because they don't want to think about it, because they want to continue living their sinful lives, because, for the most part, sin is pleasurable, at least for a time. People don't want to stop whatever sins they consider to be fun. And so they just ignore God and it will be to their regret when they die if they never repent. Hell is for eternity, just as heaven is. Sinners are separated from God, as I said earlier, because of the fact that sin is darkness and it's like there is a veil over a person's mind. They're just encased in darkness. And they can't get out, but only one way, and that is by God's grace. God's grace. Hello there, welcome. This is me. Yes. My name is Selma Edker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary in the United States. And I am talking about heaven and hell, that they are real. And there is only one way that a person... I'm very well, thank you. I hope you're having a good day where you are. I. Thank you for coming on, and I hope you will take time to listen. There's only one way of salvation, to be able to go to heaven and be with Jesus when you die, and that is through faith in Jesus, believing in his atonement on the cross. God's grace is always reaching out to people, condescending down to people, drawing you, wooing you, giving you a desire to seek after him, giving you an awareness. You're from Saudi Arabia? Well, welcome. And God does not want anyone to go to hell. God loves you out there. He loves every one of you. He loves every person in the world. And that's why His, His grace is there for you now. He is reaching out to you saying, turn to me. It is 
the power of God that can remove that veil of darkness from your mind and help you to understand who God is and who Jesus is and what Jesus did to set us all free from sin and the power of Satan free from eternal destiny and hell God's love is unlimited what do I think about I'm sorry I don't know what that is it says S-U-F-I I, I don't understand what your question is if you can maybe explain it a little bit I'd be happy to try to answer you but God's love is so abundant that he will forgive any and all sins that a person has committed if they turn to Jesus in repentance a person will not Hager I hope I'm saying it right Hager it's good to good to see you I would like to answer your question Hager I'm just not sure what it is that you ask but God's love I'm saying is so abundant that he will forgive any one of any sins you do not go to hell for the sins you've committed in your life no matter how bad they are well thank you very much the only reason people end up in hell is because they have rejected Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior that's what happens when you when you hear the gospel message as I have just explained and if there's anyone out there right here Selma Edker and I'm in the United States and my husband's name is Norman thank you my husband is on every morning on Periscope this is his broadcast title 0900 is military time it's 9 a.m. Central Standard Time in the United States. This is his broadcast title. He's on every morning. And we have this is our website, how to become a Christian today.com. All of our Periscope messages are saved on our website. There's a tab for Periscope. You can click on that and listen to any of our previous broadcasts. And on all of them, our central message is about salvation through Jesus Christ. So if anyone has come on in the last few minutes, um, I've already talked about what it means to become spiritually born again. And you can just replay it if you want to hear that. And I hope that you will. Jesus loves everyone out there and he does not want you to go to hell and you know what on our website we have many articles that we have written uh, about Jesus about the Bible about the false religions of which there are thousands one of the articles that I wrote one time, I titled it, How Much Are You Worth? 
and I'm asking in that question, how much do you think you're worth to God? I'm not talking about how much are you, are you worth financially, but how, how valuable do you think you are in God's eyes? Do you believe that God even thinks about you at all? He does. And I can tell you how much you are worth to God. Okay, Hager, I, I figured you were a Muslim. And let me say this. The Muslim religion is the same as Hindus, Buddhists, Roman Catholics, uh, Mormons, Jehovah's. They're all equal in God's eyes because they are not the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The difference between faith in Jesus and all other religions is that God says, in the Protestant Christian Bible that Jesus took on himself all the sins of mankind and paid the penalty for our sins so that when we by faith in Jesus repent and live for him we will not end up in hell when we die there is no other religion that teaches that that's why knowing about Jesus is so important. We love, Norman and I love all people. We love the Muslim people because we have the love of God in our hearts. What do I know about Sunni people? Um. Are you talking about the Sunni Muslims? What I know about the Muslims is that they... No? Okay, sorry. What is your question again? No other religion tells that Jesus has already paid the penalty for our sins and no one can do anything to earn their way to heaven. Jesus already paid the price. You can't get to heaven by Oh, Saudi Arabia? What do I know about Saudi Arabia? Um, I know that it's a rich country. They have a lot of oil and they're supposed, they're supposed to be friends of the United States and that I, I assume most of them are Muslim people. The reason why Norman and I are on Periscope is because we love you out there, every person. We love the Muslims as well as everyone else. And that's why it is so important to us that you hear about Jesus being the only way of salvation. All, all other religions besides followers of Jesus think they have to go through certain rituals to earn their way to heaven or they have to do good works to earn their way to heaven but those 
all those teachings are lies of the devil. God, the true God, is a spiritual substance consisting, okay, consisting of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus alone is the way to heaven. And it is only by God's grace, the Bible says. God's grace is a, is a gift from God. Salvation is a gift from God. You cannot earn your way to heaven. Praying a certain number of times a day or re, uh, going through certain rituals. Uh, our city name, Charles, is St. Charles. St. <laughs> Charles, Missouri is the name of our city, believe it or not. Um, is that what you were asking, uh, Charles? Is that, did I give the right answer or were you asking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, that's the truth. Um, was that actually your question or were you, were you meaning something else? I'm not sure now. Were you talking about maybe the city where Jesus lived? I just want to be sure I'm understanding correctly. So as I was saying, it's very important to us that the Muslim people who come on Periscope will hear about Jesus and the way of salvation because it may be the only time you will ever hear the message. It's the only time possibly that you can know the true way of salvation. Love, the real love of God for all people means that you tell others about Jesus. Just saying that you love everyone does not accomplish anything. That is actually a false gospel message. Just to say that you love everyone and you accept everyone the way they are. That is actually meaningless. The true love of God is about Jesus and telling the world about Jesus. So that if they will hear and believe, they can spend eternity in heaven. Bless you too, Charles. Thank you for listening. It is a counterfeit love of Satan when people say, we love people of all religions. Well, it's one thing to love the people, but if you don't tell them about Jesus, your love isn't real because you're letting those people go to hell. So there is a distinction between just saying you love everybody and your actions in telling them about Jesus. That's what the true love of God is. And that is one of the ways that Satan is deceiving the world, is this inclusive message of just love everybody and we'll all get along. Well, I don't think that's working out so well when you look at what's happening in the world, there's wars and fighting and shootings, killings, abuse, abortion, 
racism, every kind of evil you can think of going on in the world today. And the only thing that can change that is the love of Jesus. And that happens one person at a time. When a person chooses to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, then that person is transformed into a new person. And that's the only way that change can happen in this evil world. Well, my friends, that is it for today. I, as always, pray that there is someone out there who will have ears to hear the gospel message and believe it. And one day, decide to surrender your heart and life to Jesus by God's grace. The Bible says it is only by God's grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, a free gift from God. You can't earn it. We don't even deserve it, but that's what a loving God that the true God is. So that's the end of my message today, friends. We love you all out there. Norman will be back on tomorrow morning, and I will be back on Tuesday morning, Lord willing. So long for now.